Desmond Du here from No Sleep Creative. Today we're going to create this color echo text effect just by using one single text layer. So let's begin. In After Effects, let's hit Command N to create a new composition. I'm going to name this Demo and do Full HD 24 frames per second, 2 seconds long. Click OK. The first thing I'm going to do is with my Type 2, Command T, type in the word Echo. And then I am going to add an expression in my source text by using my animation preset called repeater. So this allows me to specify how many times I want the text to repeat by through a slider control. And I made a tutorial on this text repeater setup. The link is in the description below. For those who want the expression right now, here it is. You can copy this expression into the source text of your text layer and make sure you have a slider control name character number. So that allows you to control how many times to repeat it. Okay, moving on. Back to our demo composition, let's add in a color control effect uh, from our effects and preset panel into our effects control. So double click on it. Okay, let's click and drag. And let's rename this color control to color control space one. And we're gonna command D to duplicate it three times. And we're gonna write an expression to connect a text animator to our effects control over here. So we can go animate, fill color, RGB, and we're going to delete the range selector. We do not need it. Option click on the fill color. Traditionally, we would just use a pick width to our color control over here, but we're not going to do that. We can just leave it there for now. We are going to use the name of text animator, which is we're going to rename it to the number one. We're going to use the name of the text animator to automatically link to our color control over here. So we can do so by creating two variable and is equals to this property dot property group two so i'm going to explain what this means dot name so it's saying this property field color the property group so this is group number one the field color and then group two is you know the text animator okay and we can copy and paste uh, our the string that i just copy so this color control one and just get rid of the one and let's add plus n semicolon and then let's replace the whatever text was in here to s our variable and let's change the color here and you can see it has been linked so i don't need to pick with it now the beauty of it is that when i duplicate this text animator notice uh, let me change this color something else it automatically link links uh my color to my color control for me so very handy uh, we're going to delete this text animator for now as we're not done. And next thing we want to do is add an expression selector. And also we want to copy this variable n over here and we're going to reuse it in our expression here. So delete everything except the selected value and let's drop our n variable. And instead of a 2 for the property group, let's keep it 3 because it's nested under one more layer. Okay. And next, we are gonna write and uh, turn. Uh, we're gonna write an if statement, and uh, we're gonna write it shorthand using a ternary operator. So this is uh, how it spells. So in case you guys want to look it up, so we are gonna type in if text index is uh, mod, which is denoted by percentage sign, the text name of the text animator, which is which is a number, is equals to zero. So basically, if there's no remainder. Right, give me the selected value, else give me zero. Basically, do nothing. And let's see if it works. Yep. So now, if I were to duplicate this text animator now, you can see yeah, my characters has been uh, automatic color. You know, for every one character, uh, first character, it will be green. And then uh, the second, anything that can be divided by two is will be uh, in orange and and the multiples of three will be in blue and if i duplicate one more time every fourth character will be red and uh, so that's cool but let's first of all we want it to affect uh, each line instead of each character so let's delete all the text animator and change it back to lines okay and we can just duplicate our text animator now so this is pretty nifty if you have like maybe Eight more color control, uh, yeah, color control effects. And so instead of manually linking them up, this will be an easier way. Uh, let's reduce our font size to actually no. Let's keep it at 
let's keep it. Let's actually put it to 350. And we are going to reduce the leading to zero. So, and uh, so the hard part is done is doing this expression for the colors. And now we're just basically hiding all the other copies behind the first, uh, first echo text. And we're gonna now create an, uh, an echo scale effect by going to the text layer and animate all transform property. I'm gonna rename this animator to transform. And I'm gonna add my scale to 200. And you can see it's scaling up like this because uh, I need to go to my text layer, go under more option. Instead of anchor point grouping by character, I need to do it by line. So I can, can, I can scale my, my whole word instead. And uh, let's actually reduce this font size to 300. And let's reposition it. And we're gonna open up our range selector and set a keyframe for offset to be negative 100. Move down 20 frames and put it to 100. Go to advance and change the shape profile of our text animator to ramp up. And we are going to change base on character to base on line. And let's see what happens. And we got to reverse. We're gonna, we need to uh, reverse the keyframe. Select our keyframe and time reverse keyframe. So it's going to scale up. So let's also select our text layer and give it a stroke. So we can see it more clearly. And instead of a green, let's actually do something yeah, like an orangey yellow. Like that. And if you want, you can specify more repeater, uh, more repetition. So you can give it uh, some more thickness. And then what we're going to do is to reposition uh, where the echo is centered. So right now it kind of looks like it's going, it's kind of a little bit high. Uh, we can go in, in our text animator, in the transform text animator. We can set our position for the y-axis to be about... Yeah, 85 seems nice, so it's, it's like echoing right at us. And there's other settings we can play around with. We're almost done at this point. So you just want to explore some settings, you can just change the X and see what happens. And change the X, maybe a little bit, a little bit more. I'll reduce the font size so we can see it clearly. We can change the X. We can play with the rotation. Maybe not too much. Maybe about 45. And we can also, let me just move it here. Reduce the opacity to zero. So there's a lot of possibility and you, you can even change the shape profile to ram down and see what happens. So, yes, and uh, so go ahead and explore it. I'm gonna reset my settings for the rotation and the Y, the position for the X to be zero. And let's see, one thing to keep note is that the limitation of this uh, technique, this echo effect, is that it's bound by the text animator. So that means to say, if I were to use like uh, my transform position over here, right? Which I can get by pressing P. If I were to keyframe it so from here to maybe here, there's no, there's not gonna be an echo effect. You notice the echo effect is still the scale up echo effect. Uh, so this is a, a relatively new technique I discover, and uh, I'm still investigating how I can get it to echo as it moves. All right, so hopefully the project you're working on doesn't require very, um, very complex uh, animation, very complex echo effect. So it hopefully it's just like it scale up, scale down, and move up, move down. So let's go back and I'll transform. Let's play this again. And we can set, uh, let's change our range selector back to ramp up. Okay. And we're going to reposition it higher. And we're going to duplicate our line two now. So we're going to do a line two. And this will be our subtitle. And hit return. And we're going to just decrease the font size to about 100. And then let's open up a text animator. Under transform, let's change our scale back to 100. And let's put it downwards over here. And let's increase the Y position to about 400. So it's gonna come from the bottom off screen and come up. And I need to, uh, I need to time reverse the keyframe and select this keyframe. 
and keyframe assistant, I reverse it. So it's gonna fly out from the bottom like that. And let's reposition it like this. And we are done. Thank you for watching this tutorial. If you like this video, please subscribe and like for more. You can also follow me on Instagram at DesmondDude to see my latest work. Alright, that's all I have for you guys. I'll see you next time.